What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. My name's Keelan and today we're talking about the hard truths about following your dreams and turning your dreams and passions into a business. I find as a society we like romanticize following your dreams and while I think it's one of the ways you can find the most fulfillment in life, at the same time it's not an easy route to choose and a lot of the times it's going against kind of the easier flow of things and you do have to make some hard decisions. So before we even jump into the hard truths, I want you to think back to that montage that we saw right at the beginning of this video. Looked like a nice day, right? There was writing involved and for those who don't know or who might be new to my channel, like my dream is to be a writer. So there was writing involved, there was arts involved, there was making dinner involved and all of that footage, all of that montage was entirely false. All of those clips were taken from different days and to be totally honest, I just kind of wanted to use them because they were nice clips, but they were all taken from different days and compiled into one kind of like ideal day in the life of a entrepreneur. And like, if I'm being honest, most days aren't like that. Most days are absolute chaos. And I just wanted to put that in here to kind of remind everyone that what you see on YouTube, even though people aren't like, people aren't lying to you, all the clips from a vlog or from the day or from that one day, but the days are chosen strategically to be the most entertaining for the audience. So it's like curated perfection and also imperfection. It's not like you're showing everything perfect on YouTube, but it is curated content. So like even my day in the life vlogs, like day in the life of a communications officer or day in the life of a wannabe Fiverr freelancer, like I chose to vlog on those days specifically because they were interesting days. I knew what I was going to be doing. I knew it was going to, you know, have an audience type of appeal. Whereas most days when you're pursuing your dreams, following your passions and trying to turn that into a business are absolute chaos. Now they're not chaos for everybody, but for a lot of people they're chaos. And it's a constant balance between your current job, if you're currently employed, like with a company, pursuing your passions and trying to build your own business, and then also your personal life, and then also your health. Like it's a constant balance and for me, that balance typically descends into chaos. <laughs> Oftentimes, more often than not, my days descend into chaos. So if you're ever watching a vlog about somebody pursuing their dreams, somebody following their passions, know that they picked that day strategically. They picked that day, week, month to vlog strategically because it has audience appeal. It's not necessarily the whole truth. It's not a lie, but it's not it's not necessarily the whole truth. So that's just something I wanted to put right up front because I think, you know, this hustle culture on YouTube and like reading blog posts about pursuing your dreams and all of these things and trying to turn your dreams and passions into a business, it, it always seems like people in these situations are in control and I'm telling you they're not. Anyway, that's my little like rant at the beginning and now let's get into the hard truths about following your dreams. The first hard truth is that it's terrifying. Like imposter syndrome, check, self-doubt, check, fear of failure, check. All of those things will happen to most people. I'm generalizing here, but I know, especially people around my age, I'm in my mid, late, I'm actually in my late, but we're gonna say mid, I'm in my mid twenties. And everybody who I know who is my age, who is kind of pursuing their dreams and trying to turn their dreams into a business, everybody I know, I don't think I know a single person who's the exception has imposter syndrome. And imposter syndrome, for those who don't know, it, it's exactly what it sounds. It, when it's, it's when you feel like you're an imposter and you're not actually an authority on the topic. So let's say you're making a presentation to a group of professionals. You feel like you shouldn't be there because you feel like an imposter and like you're not actually qualified to be there. And just to like kind of put this into perspective for everyone, and this is what I do to put it in perspective for myself too, is just because you're a professional at something doesn't mean you're done learning it. So everybody who's on a professional journey is constantly learning. There's no like, there's nobody who just knows everything and they're the ultimate professional and that's what you have to be. And if you're not that, you're an imposter. No, like even at the beginning of your career, you're a professional and you're just constantly learning. So I, I remind myself that when I have imposter syndrome, I'm like, no, I'm a professional. I'm just a professional who's learning. And yeah, every professional is learning. Even the CEOs of the biggest companies, they're learning. So it's just a nice way to put it in perspective and to really like, you know, start talking to yourself like you're a professional while acknowledging that you're still learning. And that kind of like fulfills the imposter syndrome like kind of craving a little bit. I don't know if that makes sense. 
All I'm saying is that it is terrifying. People don't say that, but it is scary. There's a whole bunch of scary things that come along with it. And that kind of leads me into the next point that failure is inevitable. You're going to try different things and they're going to not work or they're going to not be as successful as you have hoped. And I know people kind of harp on this point all the time, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it because I think there's other hard truths that we have to acknowledge that go beyond this. But just know it's inevitable. And failure is not failure if you learn a lesson from it. So yeah, that's all I have to say on failure is that it'll happen, but don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. It'll happen. So the third hard truth about pursuing your dreams and trying to turn those into a business is your health, whether physical, mental, and I'm going to add a third category because I feel like it should be its own third category. Social will suffer. Your health will suffer. Again, generalization, not talking about everybody, but in general, your health will suffer, whether it be through a lack of sleep, a lack of exercise, a lack of like seeing friends, all of those things will suffer because instead of putting time into those things, you're going to be putting them into pursuing your dreams and your business. Now, again, this is where the balancing act comes in because if you allow the health component to suffer too much, then you're going to end up in a position where you cannot do the other things like pursuing your dreams and passion. So it really is a balancing act. If you find yourself not sleeping every night, like that's a problem. You definitely need to recalibrate because as a sleep deprived person, you're not going to be as efficient as you would be if you got a good sleep. So your health will suffer, but I'm like, I'm trying to get better at this and I'm really trying to prioritize my health. So if you ever go to pursue your dreams and try and turn those into a business, make your health a priority. Make your mental, physical, and social health a priority because the only person who are going to make those things a priority is you. And if you don't make them a priority, then they, they will suffer to a point where it might become impossible to actually pursue your dreams. If there's one night, for example, where you have to stay up late, fine, so be it. If you're staying up late every night for six months, maybe it's time to make an adjustment. The fourth hard truth about pursuing your dreams and trying to turn those into a business is that inspiration is not sustainable. Inspiration is like a spark and you need something else to keep yourself motivated, to keep yourself going, to essentially turn your dreams into this business. Now, what I've been doing actually, and this is new, so I am definitely not like a pro in this by any means, but I'm trying to build some new habits, some good habits, so that I'm building a system, like a daily system, that will keep me on track to achieving my goals whether I'm inspired or not. I use this habit tracker to track my habits. And just to give you a little example, I'm still building them up. So I just started this at the beginning of last week. I'll give you some examples and they're very simple, but it's about setting myself up for success. So make bed every morning because I like to have, and I'm pointing over here because my bed's over here. I like to have a clean space. Walk outside because nature gives me inspiration. So it's fueling that creative well. And whether I wake up inspired or not, I can usually find some sort of inspiration or motivation in nature. Bike, so exercise. So I've got a biking desk. Write 2,000 words a day. Read five pages and no phone before 9 a.m. So those are the habits that I'm building to help me continue working even if I'm not inspired. On those days where you're not feeling particularly inspired, when you're building a business, you still have work to do. So there's got to be a way around that kind of like block. Personally, I'm trying to do that with habits, but if you find another way, that's great. If you have another way, let me know down in the comments below because I think it's really interesting when people share their different techniques for achieving their goals. The fifth hard truth about pursuing your dreams and trying to turn those into a business is that Debt is literally lurking around every corner, like every corner, whether it be because you want to go back to school to pursue a course in a particular topic, or in my case, as an author, you want to hire an editor to edit your book. Debt is literally everywhere. So here's my kind of like advice. I'm not saying don't go into debt. People go into debt to pursue their dreams all the time. Just think about the amount of people that go to college or university, like all those people are doing those things to eventually get a job, to pursue their dreams. Now, don't get me started on the price of university and college in the United States. I'm from Canada and I think 
our university and college is too expensive and it's nowhere near as expensive as university and college in the States, so I won't get started on that. But I'm just saying, people do it all the time. People go into debt to pursue their dreams all the time. My advice would be twofold. If you can save for it, do. Don't, don't go into debt to try and pursue your dreams. It's just not worth it. If you can save for a particular item, startup costs, etc., do it. If you can crowdfund it, do it. If there's a way to get the cash to start something, do it. Now, if you do have to go into debt to start your business, fine. Lots of businesses do. Like, they get business loans, no big deal. My piece of advice would be not to go into high interest debt. So those are your credit cards. If you're trying to hire an editor to edit your book, don't pay them with your credit card. If you're trying to, you know, buy a book cover, don't pay them with your credit card. If you're trying to buy stock for a particular product that you're making, don't pay them with your credit card. Don't put it on your credit card and say to yourself that you're going to pay it back later. Try to find a method through which you can pay for these things that is not so high interest. So that's my advice. If you can, don't go into debt. And if you really have to, don't go into high interest debt like credit card debt because it's hard to get out of that, you know? My sixth hard truth, and this is kind of more like a piece of advice, but it's something we don't see normally, is that it's okay to wade in slowly to pursuing your dreams. You don't have to jump all in and quit your job and move across the country. Like, you don't have to do that. You can start small and scale up. There's no problem with doing that. A lot of the times, it just seems like it goes from zero to a hundred real quick. And I'm here to tell you that it normally takes a whole bunch of little steps before that. So wait in, like if you want to pursue your dreams and start turning those into a business, start today, but start small and wait in. There's no, you don't have to like just dive into the deep end and like flail around until you find like a lifeboat to cling on to. Like you can wade in and learn how to swim instead of just like starting by drowning, so small piece of advice, but I feel like it's a hard truth because a lot of the times like we're bombarded with like, just quit your job and just do it. But like, I'm, you, you really don't have to do that. You don't. My seventh hard truth, and this is like interesting because I feel like it's intuitive, but I feel like you also don't realize how much it impacts your life but you will feel a sense of purpose once you start pursuing your dreams. And I'm not saying people who aren't like trying to turn their dreams into a business aren't feeling a sense of purpose, but as soon as you start trying to turn your passion or dream into a business, you will start feeling a sense of purpose. And it's a little bit overwhelming because you just end up caring so much. And again, this is a generalization, but for me personally, like I care so much about my business and my work. It's, it's kind of crazy and it kind of puts into perspective how little you care about other things and it just hang with me for a moment. Like you'll be spending time doing an activity that you used to think you enjoyed. Like for example, I'm just gonna use like watching TV. Like I love watching TV, but I would a thousand times out of 10 all the time would rather be working on my business than watching TV. Obviously I expect there to be days down the road where, where that is not the case, but it's just caring so deeply about one thing has made me realize how kind of little I care about other things. Anyway, the fulfillment just puts different things in your life into perspective. I personally, again, I'm speaking kind of like anecdotally here. I personally have found so much fulfillment in pursuing my dreams that it's made other areas of my life come into perspective a little bit more clearly. And it's made me realize what I value and what I don't value. And so it's not the fulfillment from pursuing your passion and turning that into a business that is kind of the hard truth. It's the hard truth about discovering other areas of your life where you just don't find fulfillment and they're kind of just there. The eighth hard truth about following your dreams and turning your passions into a business is that your dream might be different from what you thought it was. So I'm gonna use a personal example here. I want to be an author. I wanted to be an author. I still want to be an author, but that is now only a portion of my dream. So I want to turn my passion of stories and of creativity into a business. And so now I've added to my suite of like business offerings. There's my author portion. Obviously there's my YouTube portion. You're here right now of my business, but I'm also pursuing ghostwriting and book cover design. And 
as you can see, they're all tangential. Author, ghostwriter, book cover designer. They're all in that story creativity space. But if someone had told me that I was going to be a ghostwriter when I first started out my journey to becoming an author, I would have been like, no, I'm definitely not. But that is a core part of my business now, as is cover design. Those are my biggest kind of money makers, and they're things I really enjoy. I love working with clients. And so it's interesting to see how your dream evolves as you continue to pursue it. So those are all the hard truths I have about pursuing your dreams and trying to turn your passions into a business. If you are trying to turn your dream slash passion into a business, let me know down in the comments below what you're trying to kind of develop as your business and let us know one tip that you found has been super helpful along the way because I honestly think one of the best ways to learn and to grow is through peer-to-peer information through peer-to-peer -peer mentoring. So if you want to let us know down in the comments below, that would be absolutely fantastic because I'm sure it would be helpful to all of the others watching this video and it would be helpful for me too. I'm on this journey just like you. Leave a comment down below. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'm so sorry, I'm going to have to cut this right now because I've got like a tickle in my throat and I'm about to start coughing. So again, I hope you enjoyed. If you want to check out any of my videos, I'll link them in the cards and at the end of the video. So thank you so much. Let us know down in the comments below what your dream is and what you're doing to pursue it. All right. Thanks so much. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.